Well, as Russia escalates its attacks on Ukraine, some of the people trying to cover the conflict are finding themselves in danger. American journalist and award-winning documentary filmmaker Brent Renault was killed by Russian forces yesterday outside Kyiv. He was there filming the refugee crisis. U.S. photographer Juan Arredondo was also injured in the attack and described the incident from a hospital. What happened to you? Uh, we were we crossed one the first bridge in Irpin. We we're going to film other refugees leaving, mm -hmm. and we got into a car. Somebody offered to take us to the other bridge, and we crossed a checkpoint, and they start shooting at us. Um, so the driver turned around, and they kept shooting. Well, here to discuss this is Tim Crockett. He is the founder and senior consultant for Flying Frog Consultants, a management company specializing in safety and security risk for businesses and organizations. He's also a former member of the British Special Forces. Uh, Tim, thank you for joining us. Um, you just heard some of the sound there uh, from the gentleman who survived. What's your initial reaction to what's happening to journalists in Ukraine right now? Well, the event that happened to Brent, obviously his death is tragic. It's not necessarily a surprise given what we've learned up until this point. Uh, we've seen an attack on a news station in Kyiv. We've seen a subsequent attack on other journalists, including uh, a British um, satellite company. And you've got to realize that there is this confusion on any battlefield in any conflict where um, often people get caught up in situations or are mistaken for being a combatant. From what we've heard of this situation, um, they were moving towards an area in conflict, uh, perhaps in a vehicle that was not marked, and they were probably wearing protective equipment, helmet, body armor. So from the Russian soldier's perspective, they may have just simply been seen as an enemy combatant mm -hmm. and were fired upon as a result. So that's one of the things that a lot of journalists that are not familiar with these situations have to take into account. Sometimes their camera equipment, if it's a larger camera on the shoulder, could mm. be mistaken for being a weapon of some sort. So there are many different factors that we don't know at this stage. Um, but obviously, the, the end result was that uh, journalists did lose their life. Yes, yeah, so many risks involved. Um, when you talk about this not being that surprising, considering there's clearly a conflict going on, um, any tips, if you will, on how news outlets and journalists can better be prepared uh, for doing these types of jobs in hostile environments like Ukraine? Yes. Anyone going into harm's way, be that a journalist, uh, an aid organization, they have to train their personnel um, and then the information that they can make their own informed decisions on the ground. It's, it's fine putting them through uh, an online course or a virtual course of some sort, but experiential scenario-based training will put them in situations where they will fit uh, the situation that they're in and, and make mistakes and then hopefully learn by those mistakes. Um, often we've seen a, a change in reporting priorities over the last six or seven years. So we're likely to see journalists heading out there, be them working for a, a large organization or even freelance. Uh, and they may not have the, the type of training or the level of training and certainly experience of uh, how to operate safely in these sort of organizations. So know the risks, get the training, make sure you've got the right equipment, and also know your limitations. Um, mm -hmm. Often people will go in to these places and say, oh, it's not that bad. But the speech of situation can change, and often change deadly is very, very surprising. What's sort of the difference, if you will, when you look at journalists that are covering conflicts in other war-torn regions? Um, because, again, this is happening in real time, uh, and we're just three weeks now into this war. Well, this is, well, if you're on the ground, the getting shot at, uh, experience the sort of threats that many journalists in many other different conflicts have probably experienced. Um, this one, we're up against a different adversary, one that possibly could be tar targeting journalists because they want to control the information that's getting out and perhaps restrict uh, the truth of or factual reporting from the ground. Um, and those Western journalists going in, not to single out that they're any different than the local journalists, um, won't have the sort of support that they may have been used to in other conflicts. Mm -hmm. All of that has to factor in. So you are by yourself 
and perhaps in a situation that you have no real understanding of who's around you or what's going to take place. Just making the situation even more complex and amazing that people are willing to risk their lives to tell the stories. Tim Crockett, thank you for Absolutely. your time.